can you give God a great praise for all of these young people here? Oh, come on, we can do better than that. Come on. Now, I want you to open your mouth and give God the greatest praise you have on the inside of you. Oh, come on, Bible way. I need to hear you. I I need you to sound like you're a winner. Where are the winners in here? Come on, you are in the balcony. I can't hear you. I said open your mouth and begin to give God glory because you understand that God has delivered you from some stuff. God has free. Am I talking to anybody in here? You ought to open your mouth and give God glory. I want you to look down your row and say, this row is full of winners. This row is full of winners. We thought we wasn't going to make it, but we won. We thought we were going to lose, but we, you ought to give God a but I won praise. You ought to give God a but I made it praise. You ought to, 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 you ought to lift up your voice and shout. around you and tell them it's still your winning season it is still your come on that's it tell them it is still your winning season now you want to high five your own self three times and say everything attached to me he's got to win my children got to win my money got to win my man am i talking to anybody you ought to open your mouth and shout out we win Say, neighbor, say, you don't have to become a winner. Say, you was born a winner. You ought to shout like you was born. I said, shout up in here. I said, shout up in here. There is a winner in you. You better unleash. Unleash that win. Unleash that win. You can't afford to keep it in. You ought to open your mouth and shout! God said, I don't have to make you into something you already are. I just need to act. It. You ought to look down your row and tell them activation complete, baby. Acti it's time for you to win. It's time for you to win. You ought to begin to leap and shout, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. to stand before you I don't know who I'm talking to but I came to talk to some people this morning that say not only are my children getting something but my whole household did something is there anybody up in here that say my household need a miracle you ought to open your mouth and shout your household name out shout, come on, shout it out shout it out your miracle won't pass you by. Your miracle, you won't pass. You ought to lift up your voice and shout it yeah. out. you I give God praise to the man and woman of God a 
of this house. Pastor and Lady Jackson, can you help me give God praise to them? I also had the opportunity to meet the assistant pastor. Can you help me give God praise for him? My dad and my sisters are here with me. Can you clap your hands and help me give God praise for them? My mom is back home watching. I was somewhere else last night, so she stayed back, but she's here in spirit. Can you clap your hands for her one more time? Because I believe that there is something that God has for you and I don't want you to miss none of it. I want everybody who has your recording devices out, I want you to do me a favor and put it down. And while you're putting it down, I want you to smile about it. Because you about to get all God has for you. That's it, that's it. For the remainder of the service, you ought to begin to get everything God has. Don't leave nothing behind. I said don't leave nothing. Look at your neighbor and tell them don't leave it behind. Don't, don't. If it's joy you need, you better snatch it. If it's peace you need, you better snatch it. You ought to open your mouth and shout, I snatch it, I snatch it, I snatch it, I snatch it. I'm ready to preach. Very quickly, I want you to turn with me to Judges chapter 13 verses 3 through 5. We can all stand as a sign of respect in God's word. Immediately after service, I will be in the foyer. I have albums with me. I have books with me. I will be signing autographs. You can take as many selfies and usies as you would like. The Bible says in Judges chapter 13 verses 3 through 5. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head, for the child shall be a Nazareth unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. I want you to understand this morning that there is a shifting that's about to take place in your life. But, but in order for it to successfully take place, you've got to protect your anointing. Touch three people around you and tell them, protect your anointing, protect. Come on, that's it, touch them, touch them, touch them, touch them, and tell them, now touch your own self and say, I'm gonna protect my anointing. If you only knew of what was in you, you'd protect your anointing. Somebody shout, I will protect my anointing. You may be seated in the presence of God. I just need you to preach back to me for just a few moments. An angel visited Samson's mother before he was born and said to her, Samson was going to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. Before he was born, his assignment was already placed over his life. I want you to understand that before you were born, God had already placed an assignment upon your life. Some of you were created to deliver your family. Some of you were assigned to the nations. And what the enemy wants to do is kill what you were created for. Because he knows that you were created to stop his plans. And as you're working in the plans of God, uh, the attacks of the enemy uh, may try to work against you. Uh, but I got good news for somebody in here. Uh, they won't touch you. Uh, look at somebody and tell them God's got you covered. He's got, he's got you covered. See, the enemy is attacking you now to prevent you from walking into your blessed places. Uh, he's attacking you to try to stop you uh, from receiving everything that's due to you uh, because he wants it to look like uh, you won't be what you was created to be uh, he wants it to look like you're not somebody uh, he wants it to look like nothing good is going to happen in your life uh, he wants it to look like you ought to be someone uh, that you are really not uh, 
but I stand to declare right now uh, that the devil is a liar you ought to open your own mouth uh, and shout the devil is a liar uh, come on shout it in power uh, the devil is a liar the angel of the Lord appeared unto Samson's parents and gave instructions that the razor could not come up to his head. His mother and father had to hear God for him because as a child growing up, he was not able to understand the mandate that was on his life, nor why he couldn't do like the other people in order to protect his anointing. So with his leaders hearing God for him, he was able to walk in much power. He was able to walk in much strength and he could do things without a problem. He could beat anyone. As long as he was focused, he could not be defeated. So the enemy knows that as long as you stay focused, there won't be too many obstacles that you can't overcome. So he tried to send distractions to take your mind off of living right and keeping the right people around you and keeping you from being a great leader. And one thing I want you to understand is the reason why you can't do like everybody else is because you got to protect your anointing. See, see, Samson's leaders had to tell him you can't get your hair cut off. And by him being a child, he was probably saying uh, Tommy got his hair cut uh, James got his hair cut uh, Richard got his hair cut uh, why can't I get my hair cut uh, and his parents probably told him uh, the reason why you can't get your hair cut uh, is because you have such an anointing uh, that you just can't afford to lose uh, I came to tell somebody at Bible way uh, there is a sacrifice you got to make uh, in order to protect your anointing huh? you can't run with everybody huh? you can't say everything you hear huh? you can't watch everything on TV huh? you can't listen to everything huh? because of the glory that is upon you huh? you can't let nothing interfere with it huh? you ought to jump up out of your seat huh? high five three people huh? and tell them the glory is upon you huh? the glory is upon you It's very important that you know who is hearing God for you. Your leaders, your pastors, your parents, your guardians, they're in your life to hear God on your behalf. Their job is to cover you. Their job is to teach you about the good and bad in life. They teach you about what will happen if you do this or that. See, we must have leaders in our lives because they train us how to make our ears more sensitive to hear the Holy Spirit. For example, when your pastor tell you don't go down there with the other folk, it's because he or she sees something greater in you and they're trying to protect the anointing uh, that is upon your life uh, when they tell you even if it is innocent uh, just because it don't look right don't do it uh, because they know that it will attack your character uh, when your pastor tell you to wait a few months before you do that uh, they're only trying to protect you uh, so that you wouldn't get hurt uh, because if you get out there too soon uh, people will make you crawl up in a shell uh, and they'll make you say I'm not going out anymore but you ought to look down your row and say that won't be our story come on tell them that won't be our story see because Samson's parents obeyed Samson was able to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines see it was not just upon Samson to obey but it was also for his leaders to obey and that's why leaders and parents when you hear God speaking to you concerning your sheep and your children about them doing this and not doing that even if everybody else are letting their sheep do it 
if God speaks to speak something uh, that you did not let your sheep do, uh, you got to obey the voice of God uh, because He's trying to protect the anointing uh, that is upon their lives. Uh, see, when Samson's parents uh, heard the word from God, uh, his mother didn't drink wine uh, or let the razor come up to his head uh, because they were protecting uh, his calling of being a deliverer. Uh, so it did not matter to Samson's parents uh, about what the other children were doing. Uh, it did not matter uh, about what the other children were wearing, uh, what the other children were watching, uh, who the other children were listening to. Uh, you got to understand uh, that you can't let your children uh, be exposed to things too early uh, in their lives. Uh, but God has charged you uh, to protect their anointing. You ought to open your mouth and shout, I will, I will, I will. And to the young people up in here, you may not always like the things that your parents and leaders tell you. What you can do and what you cannot do. Where you can go and what you cannot go. But I want to let you know that they are telling you that because they have been where you are now before. And they don't want to see you make the same mistakes. They don't want you to experience nothing you ain't got to experience. So be thankful your parents are trying to protect you. You ought to clap your hands for your parents right there. You got to understand that with the obedience of his leaders, Samson woke in his calling of being a deliverer. With the obedience of your leaders, your parents, your guardians, you can walk into greatness. And see, this is why the devil presents peer pressure, suicidal thoughts, and confusion. Because he's after the greatness that is in you. He's fighting you uh, because he don't want you to be an example. Uh, and he will try to send people and things uh, to lure you away from your purpose. Uh, but somebody ought to declare out of your own mouth again, uh, the devil is a liar. Uh, come on, you ought to shout it in the atmosphere. The devil is a liar. He can't have your anointing. Uh, you ought to open your mouth uh, and shout the devil is a liar. Look at when Jesus and his parents were on their way home from the feast. They were looking for him and when they found him, he was in the temple. His mother was telling him that they had been looking for him and was telling him to come on. Luke chapter 2 verses 51 through 52 says, And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. See, even though he was king, bread of life, the great I am, Alpha and Omega, Savior, Lord, Jehovah, Jireh, he still obeyed his parents. He could have said, I'm God, I'm Savior of the earth, creator of all things. Don't you know who I am? But listen, he still obeyed. And I believe that Jesus did this so that some 11-year-old, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17 year old 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 maybe 30 31 32 33 40 41 40, 50 51 52 53 he did it so that you can know that it does not matter how anointed you are you still got to follow the order of obedience Even as a child, Jesus set standards for obedience. And the enemy is fighting against the spirit of obedience because he knows that obedience gives you favor with God and man. He knows that 
if he can keep the people from walking in obedience, they would not be able to walk into their purpose to the fullest. See, the enemy is after your walk with God. He's after your relationship with God. Because if he can keep you away from God, then he will try to steal your dreams, your vision, your purpose, and your destiny away from you. But I'm looking for about 300 of you that will lift up your voice and say the devil is a liar because what God has for me it is for me I tell you to jump out of your seat high five three people and tell them what God has for you it is just for you it wasn't meant for the devil to have your dreams you better know who you are open your mouth and shout it's for me This is for everybody under the sound of my voice. I want you to understand that because of the shift that would take place in your life, even as you are sitting in here today, as some of you are shifting now, but you see this shift is going to cause your future to be changed. It's some of you all's future. Uh, the enemy has already planned to take you out. Uh, but I came to Bible way to tell somebody uh, that this shift uh, is interrupting the plans of the enemy. Y'all let's shout loud enough. If you only knew what the devil tried to conjure up, you would open your mouth because this shift has interrupted the plan of the enemy. I want you to know that a lot of people, friends, family, co-workers, even your boss, they won't understand or recognize the shift. When it hits your life, they won't see you as who you are now, but they will see you like they used to see you. Talk to you how they used to talk to you. Do things around you like they used to do. They would tell you we just hang out yesterday you live in the same neighborhood just as I do you work the same job and get the same pay I get you go to the same school that I go to what makes you more than me but let me tell you it's not that you're more than them but it's now you have recognized your identity you have recognized your purpose. You now have begun to pursue after destiny instead of pursuing the things you used to follow that wasn't considered as your destiny. You decide, I don't want to settle no more. Instead of saying, I'm going to be broke, you lift your voice and say, I'm going to work to come out of this place you begin to say just because I work here now that does not mean I'll be here forever you begin to say I know I've done wrong messed up over and over again but I'm not gonna let my past hold me back let me pause and tell somebody your past is your past but your future shall be greater you ain't shout loud enough I said your future it shall be greater you want to high five three people and say greater 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 see some people some people they won't see the shift they say oh that's just Carolyn's son that's just Derek's daughter that's just James that's just Tamika 
That's just chastity. They still see you as the old on the outside, but have no clue of what's bubbling new on the inside. I tell you to look at somebody and say, neighbor, I'm about to bust. I'm about to bust. There is a new me that I'm tapping into. If you only knew, you were scoot over. You were scoot over. Because I'm about to bust. When he came back to his own country, around some of his folk, around the same people he grew up with, around the same people he worked in the vineyards with, around the same people, somebody shout the same people that he went to festivals with, they missed the shift because they were trying to underestimate who he was. They were saying is he the carpenter son his brother and sister lives here but see one thing people got to understand is just because I left my house one way that does not mean I'm coming back to say you want to open your mouth and shout I'll never be the same just because uh, my brother or sister uh, lives here, uh, that does not mean uh, I am the same. Uh, just because uh, I was born uh, to a carpenter, uh, that does not mean uh, I am the same. Uh, there is something greater uh, on me, uh, something greater uh, in me. Uh, when you begin to say, uh, I see the glass uh, as half full uh, instead of half empty. Uh, they told you, uh, you didn't know uh, what you was talking about. Uh, that glass uh, is half empty. Uh, when you say, uh, I'm coming out of this day, uh, they told you, uh, I don't know how, uh, I don't know why you're getting happy. Uh, you ain't nobody, uh, but you see the ship will leave some people behind. The ship would cause you to surround yourself with new people. You got to hang with the people that have pulled the best out of you and not the worst. I need somebody up in here today to know that you know that you know that the ship is happening now. He's shifting your family. He's shifting your health. He's shifting your children. He's shifting your business. I can't hear nobody. Open your mouth and shout ship. Shout ship. Shout ship. As a matter of fact, I want you to change your position. Get out of your seat. Run across the room. High five ten people and say, ship, 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 ship. Get out of your seat. Change your position and tell ten people, you are, you are, you, 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 Understand it, but you gotta keep shifting. Don't waste your time trying to explain what God is doing. You just keep on shifting. As we're, as we're under this anointing, as we're under this anointing, I need everybody all over this building to get as close to this altar as you can get to it quickly 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 come with your hands lifted up high 
If you say, I'm ready to shift, I'm ready to shift. Get down here, get down here, get half down here. I got to do it the way God showed me. I got to do it the way God told me. Get down here, get down here. Run, run, run. And if you can't make it to the altar, you need to be on your feet with your hands lifted up. Huh? I want you, I want you to hear me clearly. When I count to three, and even those of you who's watching, when I count to three, I want you to open your mouth and speak out everything that you need God to shift on your behalf. Because when you speak it out, immediately you shall see results. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? One, two, three. Speak it out. Speak it out. Speak it out. Speak it out. You ought to open your mouth. You ought to open your mouth. Right there where you are, speak it out, speak it out. Now open your mouth and say, shield, shield, I command you, shield. You ain't got no other choice. You got the shield, you got the shield. You, you got the shield, not tomorrow, not next week, but now, now, now. Open your mouth and make that thing shh. your mouth and worship 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 lift your voice come on I need to hear you open your mouth and worship what am I minutes oh every soul lift your voice and worship oh he's doing something in the realm of the spirit oh he's doing it he's doing it he's doing it he's doing it oh that thing you've been asking for for years he's doing it he's doing it I came to tell you your prayers are being answered your prayers are being answered open your mouth and worship
for many of you. The enemy was trying his hardest to not get you to this place. But you ought to look at your neighbor and tell him the last laugh is on the devil. I want you to know that because you recognize your God-given identity and you recognize where God wants you to be, the enemy is not going to come at you easy. As a matter of fact, he's going to come at you even harder. But there is something called power. That God has placed on the inside of you. So whenever the devil pop his face up, you lift your hands and your voice. And you say, I am who God says I am. Put it in the atmosphere now. I am who. Say it again. I am who God says. Every eye closed. Every head bowed. Everybody should be standing. Even for those who didn't make it to the altar, this is for you too. There's somebody in here, you are aware now of what God is doing in your life, and even the things that he's getting ready to do. And you say, I don't want anything holding me back. Not even sin, not even addictions, whatever it is. If that's you, and even for some of you who say, I want to be baptized. I want to become a part of the church family. I want you to lift your hands and someone is going to come and find you and direct you to the right place. If that's you, don't be ashamed. Lift your hands. If that is you. If that is you. If that is you. Wherever, wherever. We have one. That's it. Clap your hand. 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 No, there's more. Come on, that's it, that's it. God wants to keep shifting you with nothing pulling you back to your past. Nothing pulling you back to who you used to be. If that's you, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Everybody all over this building, clap your hand and give God some praise in this place. Before you leave this altar, I want you to hug as many people as you can and tell them God has shifted you for the better. He has shifted you for the better. That's it, that's it. Hug them, hug them, hug them and tell them He has shifted you for the better. Said, hug them, hug them, and tell them he has shifted you for the better. He has shifted you.
was just for me. If that's you, I want you to get a $20 seed or as close to it as you can. Everybody's sowing something. Get that $20 seed or as close to it as you can. Run down here, lay your seed at the altar. When you lay your seed at the altar, you shout, I have shifted. I have shifted. That's it, very quickly. You can sow by cash, credit card, or check. However you sow, get that seed in your hand. Run down here and begin to declare, I have shifted. I have shifted. seed the soul I need you to run down here and touch the altar anyway and declare I have shifted everybody everybody moving 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 I need to see you I need to see you I need to see you say I won't ever be the same run down here run down run down Place. 